Hello, Jim Hodges here, Moose here. Moose is a five-year-old German Shepherd. He's actually a rescue. He's been with his uh, new owners for approximately nine months now. He came in for our residency training program. He's been a rescue. Uh, poor guy, he's so happy. He's an affectionate guy, but work is a problem. I truly believe that uh, Moose was had early training for sure, but I actually believe that that early training was very forceful and was definitely not fun. Uh, why do I say that? Because Moose with his other family who I've worked with another dog previously that they had rescued, a German Shepherd, uh, had a few of the tools of what was going on and when they got him, they saw that he knew how to do obedience, okay? I see that he knew how to do obedience, but we were just trying to uh, smooth the edges and things like that. The biggest thing with his obedience is, and, and it happened with the owner, it's happened with us, he doesn't like it. He will actually turn away and become almost aversive to it. Try to pretend like I'm not doing this and cannot get emotionally connected to obedience. So you could say, is it genetic? or is it something environmental? And I truly don't believe it's genetic. Why? Because when he is downtime, when he is on a place command, he is interacting with us in the house and definitely with his family, uh, he's a happy-go-looking guy, will look at you, will take treats, and be pretty much happy. But as soon as you start to try to do obedience, you can see right then he sort of focuses and tunes out. He'll take treats sometimes with obedience, sometimes he won't. I think it just depends on, on where we are. He will not watch, and I've used treats to try to develop focus. I've actually even uh, taken a situation where I ask him to do a command, and I'll not move from that command until he looks me in the eye. And uh, I'm standing there for a while, quite honestly. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. So we're gonna work through. I wanted you to be aware of that. I want you to see what I'm doing. I've actually also done hand signals with him and he's gotten pretty good with hand signals, but if you even look now, he's starting to uh, uh, dial out on what's going on. There's no squirrels over there right now. There's, there have been cats and squirrels around and other people. That might get his attention, but what we have seen is even with working, he looks away. So we're gonna continue to work. The important thing is, is that we're as positive as we can be with our obedience. We try to continue to encourage him. And if we can ever find something that really gets him excited, uh, we want to preface that with his obedience. Like a squeaker toy. Squeaker, he gets real excited at home with a squeaker toy. Squeaker toy out here, it becomes the same thing. But we do have plans, I do have goals that we use treats, food when it's time to eat, and uh, the squeaker to preface or to lead the obedience. So what do I mean by that is, you squeak, you ask him to uh, look, at the, look at you to get the food, uh, you have a treat, he looks at you, and as you get ready to hand it to him, you ask him obedience. So the, the last thing he has in mind before we do the obedience is a positive thing. Contrary to what I normally ask people to do is, I'm gonna ask you to give treats in the squeaker at other times without obedience. You remember how I always talk about, we try to do with praise, uh, words, touch, treat, toys, positive emotion. We try to do those, do those in that moment. And we try to withhold those when we're not getting what we want exactly, so that we can teach our dog what praise is. Where with him, because he does tune out with obedience, we're gonna give that praise and treat and toy and things like that, that'll get him turned on. Sometimes we're gonna do it have him do obedience, good boy, give it to him and let him go. Other times we're just gonna do it because we wanna keep that drive up of that excitement of the things that do make him feel good in life. I'm sorry, buddy, we've been sitting here for a while now. But I just sorta wanted to lay that down. This is gonna mean a lot more to the owner. But if you ever have a question about something where you can't get your dog motivated, feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to try to help. Uh, in most cases I can, in fact, this is the first time I haven't been able to find something that works consistently to get their attention, except for maybe the hand signals. Consequence, you know, we go level, maybe level two, but heavier consequence is not gonna fix this. 
So it's not about consequence. I believe that could have been what created this problem. Do I know 100%? I don't know, okay? But I just have that feeling. All right, man, so I'm going to try to get him happy. I'm going to try to do all the things I talked about with motivation, praise, words, touch, a treat, toy, positive emotion. And then if i got to do something, I'm going to bite him, but you're going to see it's not going to be much. It's going to be more symbolic than anything. And then we're going to move on. Hey, you ready? See, you heard me? Hey, oh, good boy. He looked at me. Good job. He doesn't always, but I've been working at it real hard. So I got his attention. Let's go. Atta boy. So the same rules still apply as far as what we want him to do with obedience. So we let's go. He walks with us by our side. We have a loose leash, and uh, we don't keep it tight. We're not trying to guide him where we want to go. It's loose. If he starts to get away from our side, we just tap back to us, and we'll tell him, no, let's go. Let's go. Good boy. Good boy. And having said that, he's looked at me twice already. So sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, but we continue to try to improve and make him as happy as we can. Sit means sit. If he didn't sit, it'd be, no, sit, good boy. We still praise even after consequence, just not as much as if he did it correctly to begin with. I'm not gonna keep him in sit for a long time because I just feel like it's not comfortable for him. So, break. Good boy, good boy. So my break with a lot of dogs is to come right here. Him, he wants to come in and curl. I'm entirely happy with that, okay? On the come command, we want him to come and sit in front of us, which you'll see in a minute. But the break, my primary goal with the break is to get him to automatically release and come to us, both hopefully subliminally, we're teaching him that we're the center of the earth. We're the ones that he can count on, that he can trust and feel secure with. And when we break and he comes in, hopefully he's feeling secure and we can pat him and love him and then move on from there. Let's go, buddy. Hope that makes sense. Sit. That's the hand signal. Good boy. So you see, I can do a hand signal with him. That was down from the side. I can do that hand signal with him from the side and he does it. But if he's not watching me, that might be a little bit harder. So if I gave him the hand signal, he didn't do it, It'd be the same thing as verbal. I would go, no, down, and it'd be the tap towards the ground. Good boy. And now he has to hold that down until I release him, okay? So he can do it. Good boy. The other thing with him, and I watched right there, if you go back and watch the video, you'll see he started to jerk. He wants to move real fast. He wants to work real fast to get it over with. When you see he's anticipating you slow your obedience down. Make him realize he can't work fast. He's not going to work fast. He has to go on your rhythm, your routine, and your timing. Okay, buddy, sit. Good boy. Great. So you saw that. The OWN was from the side. He did it. Okay, good boy. And he has to hold it. You notice with the sit and the down, I haven't told him the S-T-A-Y word. And I will not tell him that with sit. I will do it with the D-O-W-N command. So, let's do it this way. Come on, buddy. Right here. Sit. Good boy. And he looked at me again. Good boy. So if he was to look at me for any reason while we're working, I'm going to praise it. If I have a treat or a squeaker toy, I'm going to pop it, try to uh, connect it with him looking at me. Down. A little slow, but I'm going to take it. Hand signal from front is down. So now I told him to down, he has to hold that down. If I told him, stay, that means for him to pack his bags, he's gonna be there for a while. We've done that in our office, in our home. We put him in a down stay, people are working around him. We're doing the things through life, but we're teaching him, he has to be there. The down stay means lay down, you can smell the ground, you can lay on your side, you can twist around, you can scratch, you can smell, lick, I don't care as long as you stay there. You don't have to focus on me anymore. If I tell him down without stay, that means be ready for the next command, okay? Very important. So typically a stay, uh, I do a minimum of two minutes, but I recommend most of my clients, once they can get to five, 10, 15 minutes, to do it a couple of times a week, 
because it helps teach your dog that you're in control and it sort of uh, steals their emotions and their, their flight mentality or their play mentality or whatever it may be. Let's go. Good boy. That was a good boy. I'm proud of it. Let's go. So I have treats. I don't know how it'll do with it, but uh, let's see what happens. That good boy. Atta boy. He looked at me. Treat. Pet loves. Drink it. Good boy. He took it. So he's doing well right this second. Just keep in mind, in the beginning, especially as we learn something new with a, with a dog that, that may have this uh, set of circumstances, it can be up and down. Just uh, keep working and harping on the positives and we can get there. Let's go. Sit. Good. So he's holding the sit. Now we're gonna do the recall. <laughs> he comes, we want him to sit. See how he didn't com completely uh, come right straight to me? I'm not gonna beat him up over it, okay? But I'm gonna continue to encourage him to come here. If he would take a treat and he was driven by treats, which he's not right now, then I could get him all the way into me. Good boy. Right, but I'm not gonna uh, force him, pressure him, correct him to do that. Again, it just goes back to what I think was done before, and it's definitely not going to get headway. That's why I say there's nothing wrong with touch. There really isn't. There's nothing wrong with the consequence. But when you intimidate, dominate, break a spirit, hurt him, or have him fear you or not trust you, then we're going down the wrong road. And that's where I believe some of this aversion is. And again, it's not just for me for two weeks. We've noticed this for the last nine months at home as well. And we just continue to push, 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 and hopefully we can, we can make the situation better and better over time. Let's go. So now we're gonna do the, and there's a bug on the uh, bed. He hates bugs, just so you know. Good boy. So he it may act like he's unsure, I don't care places, get on your bed, lay down, sit down, stand up, read a book. I don't care what he does. If a dog does that initially, I'm not gonna tell him to sit her down because that's not what we want. Places he can do whatever he wants on the bed as long as it makes us happy and makes him happy. By making us happy, that means not chewing on it or something along those lines. He'll normally just lay right back down and uh, rest. He can do a place command easily for two or three hours. He is so big, this is the biggest bed we've got, that he may sort of push off of it. With the smaller dog, I would probably get them and go, no, no, no place and get them back on the center of the bed. But I'll allow him to go over the side. Is that weakness on my part? It may be, but I just feel like that's what I need to do. Uh, because the grand scheme of things is, is not to have him forced to work, I want him to think that we're the, or know that we're the leaders and that there can be comfort and security in having boundaries and structure from his leaders or from his owner, okay? So having said that he's not driven by prey, today, right this second, he's actually looking at a squirrel over there. I don't think you can see it, but uh, he's watching it. I don't care, again, as long as he's right there. Let's go. Good boy, right here. Good. So the next thing is the heel command. Sit. Good boy. So the heel is, we've got him an imaginary box beside us. When we're at events or real tight areas, we may have him heel. His job in the heel is to stay in that imaginary box. It's our job to keep him in that box. And when we stop, he should sit automatically, okay? So again, it's a short leash, but it's not a tight leash. Tight leash compulses or makes a dog do something. Here, we want him to understand it with a loose leash, what to do and comply. Hopefully, happily comply, okay? So hand signals here, heel. I'll walk a few steps, I'll stop. He sits, good boy. And then he has to hold that sit. Remember in the beginning, I cautioned uh, my owners to work too fast work slow. If he starts to jump a command to something else, that means we're working too fast or we're becoming too predictable 
in the routine of our training. Heel, side us again, step off, come to the box. Now here's the hard one, right here, we circle. Notice I come right back out. Out a boy, good boy. Good boy, go, sit. Remember, in the heel, he has to hold it. Good boy. Let's go. So that's the obedience. The only other thing, and he does it real well, uh, he is allowed on furniture at home, I think. He loads up in the car really well. I've got a, a stump here that looks like a volcano. It's got a crater in the middle, and he's so big, but he can usually get up on it. But this is how I teach a dog to load up. If we wanted him to get up on something, we give him the word. Okay, buddy. Okay, load up. Come on. Ah, boy. Break. That's a good boy. Hey, I am. Good boy. Good boy. If that makes him happy to come in and curve to me in his situation, I'm going to take it every day. Wow, I did a lot of talking up front, but I wanted you to understand where we were going, what we're trying to do. You know, the biggest thing that we can do here is manage every situation. If it happens once, it's going to happen again and again. So be aware of that situation because there's always a time and place that that behavior may show up. If it's a positive one, we want to try to increase it as much as we can. If it's a negative one, we have to be ready for it, okay? Because there's always that potential. The same thing, if it's something we like in a behavior that he does, we put a word to it and make it a new trick or a command. If it's something we don't like, we have to provide a consequence, but remember, we're not here to intimidate or dominate with that consequence. He knows what knowing the consequence means now, okay? And, and that should suffice. You know, if you need me, you pick up the phone, 336-945-3232. Uh, Jim Hodges, Jim Hodges Dog Training. I thank you so much, and God bless.